This is episode number 61 with my good friend Billy Milios. Hello and welcome to the SOTA Process Podcast. I'm your host, Tom Evans, and I'm a personal development and fitness fanatic with a passion for discovering the concepts and tools that help us to own our mind, body and soul, as well as the processes we can implement to make us state of the art. If you're looking to make some positive changes, find your purpose and have an impact, this is the show for you. Thank you for spending your time with me today. Now let's define our greatness. Hey Sotarians, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our partners and then we'll get straight into the episode. Guys, I'm lucky enough to have partnered with the Protein Shack, which is super, super exciting. They have a great range of supplements, including everything you need from protein to fat burners to pre-workouts, BCAs, vegan subs, whatever you need, they have it. They also stock great brands such as EHP Labs, Ghost Lifestyle, Sell Your Core and many, many more. And they have a very special offer for you guys as listeners of this podcast. You can now get yourself a 10% discount off all the subs by using the code SOTAFIT10 at the checkout. Again, that's SOTAFIT10. Use that to get yourself some cheaper subs, guys. I remember the first time I ever actually bought a pre-workout, it was from these guys. So I'm super, super excited to have partnered with a company that's close to home. So head over now to theproteinshack.com.au and get yourself some great subs that will take your training and fitness to the next level. The link is in the bio. Hey Sotarians, welcome back to the Sota Process Podcast. As promised, I have another interview for you today. Now, as I said in a recent episode, I was in the process of contacting a recent Brandlow medalist from the AFL to join me on the show. And that was Nat Fife, and I had been in contact with Fremantle Football Club, and they told me that they posed my offer to Nat, uh, sorry, to Nat Fife, but unfortunately he's declined. So that's an episode that's not going to be going ahead at this point. I'll, you know, I might contact him again in the future, but I'll just have to see. However, there is another ex AFL champion doing great things out there that I'm very certain that would love to join me on the show. So. I'm going to be making contact with him very soon and yeah, hopefully that one goes ahead because that will be a great episode. So fingers crossed on that one. But in the meantime, I'm bringing bringing my mate Billy Milios on the show today. Now, self-admittedly, Bill will tell you he's just an everyday average guy. However, since I met him at uni about this time 12 months ago, I have seen a dramatic change in his mental, physical and spiritual sides of his life. Now, when I first met Bill, he was straight out of high school, not all that driven and was kind of going through the motions of life a little bit, which I think a lot of us do. I know I certainly did for a short time anyway after school. And that's why I wanted to bring Billy on today, because he has a story that is, first of all, relatable to a lot of you. And over the last 12 months, I've been able to help open Bill's eyes a little bit to the world of personal development that personally changed and probably saved my life to be dramatic. He's gone from someone that didn't really believe in its power to now someone that couldn't imagine a life living differently without it, basically. And as you'll find out in this episode, we are recording this just hours after Bill achieved his main goal for 2020, which was to complete a full half marathon. However, it didn't all go to plan for Bill, as you will find out as well. So Coming from a guy that was overweight and didn't exercise 12 months ago, now to someone who has run a sub two hour half marathon, that's pretty impressive and his outlook on life has changed a lot and I feel really blessed to have been a part of this journey to date and also going forward. But without further ado, let's get stuck into this episode with the one and only Billy Milios. Okay, welcome back to the Sota Process podcast, everyone. I have a very special guest on the show today, Billy Milios. So, Bill, first of all, thanks for coming on the show, mate. Cheers, Tommy. Good to have you on. Thanks, mate. All right, so let's start it off with you just giving us a little rundown on who is Billy Milios. (laughs) Straight off the bat. Um, Well, 
I'd say compared to your um, previous guests, um, I'm just your average kind of bloke. Um, just uh, not an athlete in any way. Um, Except that you ran a half marathon today. Yes, but <laughs> that was not um, because I was a good athlete. That was because I wanted to try yeah. to do something We'll get hard. into that at the end of the episode anyway, but um, keep you on. But yeah, I'd say I'm just like you know, your normal everyday kind of guy, um, tries to be funny, most of the time <laughs> I'm not, um, which, um, you know, a lot of my mates will say that to me, um, yeah, I don't know, <laughs> nothing too special with me. Okay, so I want to start this one off by talking about where you were 12 months ago, so about this time last year, because I've certainly seen massive changes in you, um, that have occurred in your life, which is really inspiring. So talk to me about the changes that have sort of happened in the last 12 months and where you were this time last year. 12 months ago, um, I was in Los Angeles at the moment, uh, eating my face out. Um, Were you you at uni with me? Well, yeah, okay, just before that. Just before before uni started, yeah. Um, 12 months ago, but you could say probably 10 to 12 kilos heavier, um, and not really knowing where, who I was and where my life, my, the path I wanted to live and lead. Um, but, you know, now I sort of have a better idea of what I want and where my life, I hope, takes me. So um, I'm in debt to the soda process um, for helping me through that. Um, yeah. And so like physically, mentally and spiritually, you're a lot different now than what you were then? Yeah, totally. Different. So what sort of things have changed in those three categories for you? Um, well, um, mentally, um, I've implemented uh, journaling, um, gratitude, things like that, um, mindfulness, meditation um, that have assisted the mental side of things a lot for me. Um Physically, I um, have started running. Um, I also had never stepped foot in, in a gym before, um, well, say 12 months ago. Yeah. Um, but now I go at least four times a week if I can. Um, hopefully more now that I've got my um, half marathon out of the way, I want to start focusing on building my body up a bit more rather than being in a calorie deficit and uh, running. So it's a <laughs> totally different change. Um but yeah, um, so physically, um, you know, some changes there. And what was the last one? Ah, uh, spiritually. Spiritually is, to me, is linked in with mindfulness. Um, so it's very similar to um, what I've said uh, before in regards to mindfulness. Nice. So what was the point where you decided you needed to make a change sort of this time last year or was it sort of six months ago, three months ago? Where was that point and what sort of prompted you to, first of all, make the change and what was your first step? Um, well, I mean, probably, as we said a couple of times, 12 months ago, um, you know, looking at yourself in the mirror and you think, you know, do I like what I see here? Am I happy? Um, um, is this what I want to look like um, for the next... It's being truthful and accountable with yourself. Yeah, totally. And that's um, that's where it all stemmed for with me. Um, to be honest, I had no idea about half this stuff before um, I sort of... The whole personal development Yeah, side. the whole personal development, the whole... Um, anything to do with fitness, honestly. I was like... You know, to me, fitness was going um, with my mates to play footy on a Sunday morning or, um, you know, footy training, which for a lot of people that is fitness and um, that's, you know, taking and taking that side of things seriously. But it was never really that serious for me. So um, uh, it wasn't until, you know, doing lots of sessions in the gym and stuff that I realised the difference and, um, you know... Yeah. <laughs> and then sort of, like, when was that point where you, was it like 12 months ago that you needed to make that change? Or was it six months or sort of like how far down the line was it for you? Uh, probably, if you can remember that point I, at all. I, 
to be honest, I can't really remember um, a, an exact point, but, um, you know, when, when we uh, first met um, and I found out about this little podcast that you were doing and <laughs> stuff like that, you know, I thought it was quite a funny thing and, um, you know, I laughed to myself a bit and made a few gags and stuff like that. But it wasn't until I listened, actually listened to a couple of episodes and understood fully what, what your goal was with this and um, the journey that you wanted to take with it. Um, you know, that inspired me in some ways, um, which, you know, I'm really appreciative for because... My pleasure. Oh, mate, <laughs> you know. Yeah, well, that was actually going to be one of my points was I vividly remember a conversation I had with you and all the boys and was sitting Cafe 6 at uni and I was talking Cafe about... Cafe 6? <laughs> what? I was talking place. about my sort of journal that I write in every day, the goals and the gratitude. And I vividly remember, I don't know if you'll remember, but I remember you saying to me, I, I couldn't do that. Like I wouldn't. I don't think it would help me. I wouldn't have the time to do it. I don't see the point in doing it. And probably not those exact words, but it was something along those lines. And now you do it. So yeah. sort of talk to me about like, because I don't know if you remember that, but when was the point you first started doing that? And when did you sort of first come to see the power of it? Um, so I remember, um, I don't remember that direct conversation. I can say safely. Um, but, as I said, I listened to a few of your episodes and sort of understood where you're coming from. And um, Danny Kennedy as well. Um, I listened to some of his on journalism. And the so goat. I thought, <laughs> so I thought, you know what? I'll buy a journal. It's going to cost me five bucks. And I'll trial it for a week. Let's see. Let's see the effect that this has on my productivity and... Um, you know, how I feel about things are going in my week, etc. Um, and the difference was incredible. And I see it now still, like, my productivity is way up. I'm achieving more things than I ever would have imagined possible. Just from writing them down on a piece of paper. It's on powerful, a piece of paper. It's powerful. I know, it's incredible. I could not, I, I can't actually fully put it into words. And the difference, like, I've gone through periods... Um, with my with journaling where I've stopped for a couple of weeks um, and my life my productivity is so different and now it's something that I don't think I could actually live without I think like for me to actually have gives you that direction oh, almost every yeah. day and you know it keeps you engaged and accountable all the time which is something that I guess wasn't there fully um, beforehand a bit lazy but um, now, you know, I'm a hundred percent onto accountable with everything that I want to do during my day and during my week and, um, during the year because yearly goals, you know, it's March now, but we set a few at the end of the year, new year. So you've um, been powering through them as well. Yeah. I've already uh, ticked off a fair few. Yeah, I have. Um, there's a few wild ones in there as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there are. Um, there definitely are. Um, but, you know, this. I wanted to get... See, the thing was, um, and for those of you, as I'm sure you probably wouldn't know this, but um, with everything going on with coronavirus at the moment, um, which is quite a talked about topic, um, there's no gatherings of more than 500 people. Um, so um, my uh, run, the HBF run for a reason, had to be cancelled. The one that I was aiming to do in my marathon, that's in two months' time. So that's been cancelled. Um, so I'd already paid for that and wanted to do it. Um, but that was going to be one of my questions as well. How did that affect you mentally? Well, um... Because, yeah, you sounded pretty pissed off when we talked about it, which is completely understandable. Yeah. But then um, where did you go from there? To be honest, it was a blessing because, and this um, virus, you know, it's been negative in so many ways. But for me today, it was a blessing because instead of waiting another two months and, um, you know, going with the motions per se, um, I decided, yep, this Sunday, I decided this probably two or three days ago, 
I'm going to taper, you know, for the next two or three days, drink lots of water, eat some carbs and stuff like that. And Sunday morning, I'm going to get up at six and get ready and run the race that I wanted to do. Um, so I did that this morning. Chose to see the positive. Yeah, I did. And, um, you know, that I think it's something that um, everyone should be doing. We are so prone to focus on the negatives all the time with everything. It's just almost like the way our brains are. And waiting for the perfect time to do something. Yeah, You were exactly. clearly physically ready to do it. There was no reason for you to wait two more months to knock off that yeah, goal. Yeah, that's right. Yes, I... it would have been nice to obviously do it in a competition standpoint where, you know, there's lots of other people, like proper timing, you've got your race beer ball, all that sort of stuff, but... You know, you've still ticked off that goal, which was to run 21 kilometres in one go. Yeah, and it's, you know, as you say, it doesn't... To me, all I wanted to do was finish that race um, from start to finish. No stopping along the way, apart from, you know, maybe drink fountain, because I'm not getting handed, <laughs> handed cups of water. Exactly, yeah. Um, but First one I did, I didn't drink water at all for the full 21 k's. Wow. And I had one energy gel. <laughs> I had today I didn't I don't own energy gel so I had to the fact that you did one without any energy gels I well, don't know how well I I um I took lolly snakes with me instead okay, well, so that's basically the same thing yes yeah, so... at the end of the day it's just simple glucose in a gel opposed to a lolly form yeah I, I stuffed them down for the last <laughs> 3.5 k's I tell you that much yeah I needed them badly <laughs> that's pretty impressive yeah it wasn't bad um, so this time last year, you were probably admittedly overweight and potentially lacking some big goals to strive for. So would you, yeah, like, like you said before, you were sort of going through the motions a little bit. Mm. Um, and today you completed one of your big crazy goals for 2020, which was the half marathon. So I guess we kind of already touched on this slightly before, but what was your motivation to do this as like specifically as your goal opposed to something else? Um... Well, it was sort of um, stemmed from because you obviously completed your um, full marathon, which was exceptional, and to do that in you know four hours or sub four hours is is incredible, and it's something that I don't think I could achieve. I know I said that about go riding goals and stuff like that only twelve months ago, but. Um, that's that's very far in the future for me if I was ever to attempt something like that. Um, but crazy goals, I think if we lots of people's goals um, at the at the end of twenty nineteen or the end of any year um, is usually surrounded around weight loss or um, you know traveling or something like that. Things that um, aren't really crazy because I can lose, you know, weight, but, you know, one kilogram, tick that off. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. But I want to do something that I didn't think that possible I would you. be possible to do because I the most I'd ever run beforehand was three and a half Ks. I'd occasionally go for a little lap around um, Lake Munga, um, three, so that's three and a half Ks and, um, you know, I just said, uh, say oh yeah that that was in the days where you wanted to maybe get a little bit extra run in for footy when you took it a little bit more serious in another week but um yeah yeah okay so do you think that you would have had the mental strength to do this a year ago like if um, you'd set yourself the goal to do it no. like knowing what you know now how's your like mental strength changed uh definitely definitely couldn't do it i would have I would have been out by the fourth kilometer. <laughs> I just, you know, um, implementing um, the Goggins mentality. The go oh. <laughs> Please don't compare me to that man. He's incredible. Um, what were you listening today while you were running? Um, just um, podcasts. Um, just like learning things. Things. Um, DK did a recent podcast. Yeah. Uh, it was about an eight, an hour and eight minute episode. The one with um. What's the name? Something Vines? Yeah. Is she, that the, um, the, like the mindfulness? The and, mindfulness yeah, one. Yeah. So I think for me, I learn things best oh, 100%. Whilst, whilst I'm exercising. So 100%. Um, I have 
um, listen, I often listen to my lecture notes and stuff um, that we do for uni whilst I'm at the gym, um, the recordings that are given to us, um, things like that, um, do those whilst I'm exercising because I find I retain the knowledge a bit better. Um, do you find that it actually helped you like take your mind off running? Because I find that yeah. like when I listen to music, like I can't really listen to music when I run because I'm it actually makes me focus on my running. Yeah, Whereas a yeah. podcast, I literally zone out. And like, I remember the first half marathon I did, I'd run like maybe five Ks without looking at my watch. And I'd look down and I'd be like, oh shit, I'm running at like 4.45 pace. And as soon as I looked at my watch, I like lost my constant, or not necessarily concentration, I lost that zone. And then I'd slip back to like a 5.30 pace because I'd be thinking about it. Yeah, and I did, I did that a Plenty of times along the run today. Um, it's just, you know, as you say, slipping in and out. Like, it makes it easier to to do it when your mind isn't totally focused on the pain or, you know, what you're doing. I think if you're kind of... Um, this is more for running than anything, but if you're taking in outside information, it certainly makes it easier, I think, yeah. All right, so do you have any daily habits that help you to step towards your goals every single day? Um, habits. Well... You might not even be aware of them, to be honest. No, but. to be honest, I don't... None pop out to me. Um, I guess a habit of mine is journaling now, I think. Um, and that I sets your intention for the day? Yeah, I don't think I could not journal now and I can tell the massive difference in how I feel and in my day um when I haven't journaled and that often the reason that I haven't journaled is because um I've got work and I'm working all day so um and if I've been up late at night doing things the night before sometimes I don't find the time to get it in which I should and I would like to be more accountable for those days often sometimes on weekends you feel oh I'll just take a break yeah. from this today and you know you can you can um definitely tell the difference straight away in in um my productivity especially that's the main thing um because you know we all want to be productive in our day I think if we're just going through the motions then nothing really gets done that's fair. That's fair. So what's the biggest challenge you've had to face in your life and what have you learned from it? Oh, God. That's a tough question, Tommy. Um, biggest challenge? Um, I don't know. Like, things, like, thrown at you. So I... Me and my cousin, um, Jonathan, we went on a sort of two-month trip um, to America by ourselves as little things like, um, you know, uh, we couldn't, we got kicked out of our accommodation because I was 17 years old and they wouldn't accept having a 17 year old in the, um, hotel. So finding accommodation, like all sorts of, um, problems like that, that are just thrown at you, um, out of nowhere and how you deal with those things. I wouldn't say I've had any massive um, sort of events that have been difficult to get through. I'd say I'm quite blessed in that sense. Um, you know, I've got all my family members are still alive and, you know, um, I've got great friends and I love them all. But, um, so I think it's just when things happen unexpectedly, unexpectedly, how you, um, deal with those things. Um, that makes a difference in that sense. Nice. So who's had the biggest impact on your life and why? Um, biggest impact on my life is uh, your parents are always the biggest impact on your life. Um, you might not want to believe it. You might want to be some, say someone else. Um, but your parents, um, directly or indirectly, are the biggest influence on your life because they shape pretty much everything that happens to you. And... You know that on both sides of the spectrum in, in regards to indirect and direct yeah, um, effect. Um, but outside influence, um, you've been a big help um, with a lot of things for me. But um, 
I'd say, you know, your parents, my siblings, um, I'm very close with them, so um, there, are, there are other ones as well. And what have you, what's probably the biggest lessons they've taught you, do you think? Um, well, my dad is very much uh, one of these people that um, is a very hard worker. Um, and I know that he has sacrificed so much for, for us. He's someone that likes to please everyone and um, he knows that and whether that's um, to a fault or to, um, what's the word, to... <laughs> I don't know, I'm stuck. <laughs> that's all right. Um, but anyway, um, the biggest lesson is just the work that um, you put in gets you where you want to be and I think um, I've watched him go through his own journey since I've been alive but um, I think he's getting to a place where he wants to be and so I've seen the work that he's put in and that's probably the biggest lesson that yeah. I've learned in just um, grinding every day um, slowly but surely you'll get to where you want to be it's um, the proof that hard work gets results yeah it does and um, you know Unfortunately, um, not as many people are up for the grind as, um, as we'd hoped they would be. Um, the rewards are so huge, um, so never be afraid to step out of your comfort zone and, uh, and grind because... Um, Let's go into that for a sec, comfort zone. <laughs> Tell yeah. me about your comfort zone and sort of how you've managed to get out of it, what you do to get out of it. And once you're outside of your comfort zone, how that makes you feel? Um, well, um, well, I was... If we go back to 12 months ago, yeah, okay. would you say you were living a pretty comfortable life? Yeah. Like, yeah. not really delving outside your comfort zone, that sort of thing? Yeah, 100%. Like. And then now, what's what are the changes you've made since then? Um, changes that I made are... And I've said it 50 times on this podcast, but um, <laughs> journaling, which I want to emphasize so much on this because it has changed my life totally, um, has allowed me to set goals for myself um, that are, I didn't think possible. So setting, th um, setting goals that I believe are uh, to be crazy. So that's a target that's outside your target comfort zone rather that, than inside. Yeah, because if I'm setting goals that are inside my target zone, um, in, in my comfort zone, sorry, um, targets that are inside my comfort zone, <laughs> <laughs> um, then, um, you know, those will be very easily achieved. But also, if I don't achieve them, then the, re um, the results of that are not, not fantastic. So... Um, going outside of your comfort zone and achieving go achieving those goals outside of your comfort zone make you grow and um, pro progress and you know to me and to uh, I believe it's Tony Robbins as well progress is happiness and I'm the happiest I've it's ever been about to say that yeah, yeah. And, and I'm the happiest I've ever been at the moment um, which um, is because um, I'm seeing lots of progress in what I'm doing, so, and it can be, you know, anyone, anyone. What's the next chapter for Billy Milios? Um, well. What's the next crazy goal? I wanted to um, perform music in front of people, um, which I have, which I have done before. Um, I've always been a bit of a muso, um, <laughs> in the sense that I was a gay little school kid in uh school boy in the choir um but um to perform sort of um maybe some songs that i've written myself um in front of people and um with my guitar and whatnot that's something that i set for myself i would like to do that um i really wasn't expecting that to be honest yeah um that's something that's a little bit different um also, I've got a lot of gym-related stuff that I would like to do. Um, um, so, I, I said I wanted to get my body fat below 10%. Um, that's, you know, a hard thing to do. Um, but, um, 
it's kind of switch change from that now. I just want to keep progressing and um, and growing. That's the main thing for the for the rest of this year for me. Just keep finding big bigger mountains to climb. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah. Okay, so before we get into the final three questions, where can people find your content, Bill? If you if you want to share it. <laughs> well, I don't I don't share any content um, <laughs> because I'm not in the content business. Um, but if they just want to hit you up with a sneaky follow. Well, I'm all for that. Um, at Billy Milios uh, Instagram and uh, TikTok. You're big on TikTok. Uh, TikTok famous. I was pretty huge on TikTok for a time. <laughs> I think I got a thousand views on a video, so that's that's uh, really massive in my eyes. <laughs> um, Your claim to fame, would yeah, you say? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think that's forget forget what I did forget what I did today. That's the biggest moment <laughs> for me, definitely. So, where, um, what's your TikTok name? To be honest, I deleted TikTok. Oh no! <laughs> I couldn't uh, quit while you're I ahead. Just, Look, it was a tough thing to do to the fans, but, um, you know, I couldn't keep it up. It was just, it was too much work taking over, taking over my life and stopping me from doing other great things, so. Fair enough. Okay, so define your greatness is a mantra I live by, and I'm always curious to know what this means to other people. So what is your definition of greatness? Um, greatness is the very thing that I was talking about earlier in relation to, um, grinding, um, day by day. So those that grind, um, every day, whether it be in the gym, at school, um, anything that you do in life at work, um, if you're, if you are grinding at everything that you do all the time towards a certain goal and you achieve that goal, that's greatness. And we've seen it with, uh, rest his soul, Kobe Bryant. He was the number one guy for that kind of work every day, work more than anyone else. Um, but you see the results. He was, in my eyes, um, one of the top three basketballers of all time. Um, and, you know, that's, he's just walking proof of, um, what, of what greatness is to me. Love that answer. Okay, so... My second question is kind of a theoretical one. Mm. So say you were given the opportunity to speak to the whole world. So every single person on the earth is listening to you speak and you can only give them three bits of advice. What would they be? Um, define your greatness. <laughs> um, Just going to use all my slogans. How many slogans have you got? I've got three. The main ones to find your greatness. To find your greatness, that's number one. Um, number two, uh, don't be afraid to put in the work. And number three, um, might need a second for this one because that's <laughs> take your time. Take that's your quite. Time. That's quite on the spot. Um, that's why I like doing it because it's sort of the first thing that comes into your mind is like you don't think about it too much. Yeah. You don't try and think about the perfect answer. It's more sort of naturalistic, I think, if we do it this way. What did Will Smith say that time? That great quote that I love by Will Smith. Eh? Oh, there's so many. <laughs> yeah, but there's one about, is there one about the comfort zone? Um, there's one where he says, I'm not afraid to die on a treadmill. No, that's not the one. Come on, there's an, there's another one that you say all the time. <sighs> um, what's the one I've got like written on my wall? <laughs> um, is it the one about? Oh, what is it? The one about goals? Is it that one? Yeah, it would be probably. Um, oh, being realistic. Is that the one? It's like yeah, the realistic one. So. Oh, yeah, being realistic is the most commonly travelled road to mediocrity. Bang, that's the one. That is an incredible line. I love that line so much. And that is the number one bit of advice that I would give. Don't, don't be realistic in your goals. Be crazy in your goals because um, the benefits are massive. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so last question. Yeah. I reached out to have you on the podcast because I've literally seen you transform into someone that is state-of-the-art in front of my very eyes. Damn. 
So... I've been waiting for this for you know how long. <laughs> <laughs> what does it mean to be state-of-the-art to you and why is that important? Well, it means everything to me. Um, and, you know, um, but why is it important? <laughs> um, well, it's important because... For me, it's important because um, it led to a place of happiness and, um, you know, if we aren't living a happy life, um, then it can be what the world and our life can be a really dark place and um, for a lot of people, unfortunately, that's the case. Um, so it's really important to... to apply these things that we've spoken about because um, they've transformed me from someone that I wouldn't say I was in a dark place in my life but I was in a um, I was treading water and um, these um, things that I've implemented that Tom is telling you in his podcast have changed that completely and made it so I'm always progressing and progress equals happiness so yeah awesome well bill thanks for coming on the show today mate, Cheers, mate. i appreciate it oh me too i appreciate being here okay so now let's get into some of my biggest takeaways from that interview with billy and the main thing that pops out to me is the journaling to be completely honest and that's what bill spoke about on multiple occasions throughout the interview I vividly remember talking to him at uni about how I journal literally every single day and he said to me that that's just something he could never do. He was completely closed off to that idea but I kept telling him to give it a crack and to his credit he did. And now for him it's a necessity. It's something he could not live without and for me I just find this so fascinating because he was closed off, he had a closed mindset but once he managed to change that into an open mindset his life changed for the better. And that's what I want for so many of you. You need to be open to things and give them a real crack. Give it a real go, not just a couple of days. Give things a go with the energy they deserve and then judge if it will work for you. Now, I'm not saying that journaling will change your life, but it has for Bill and it has for so many of the world's highest performers. But if you are closed off and you have a fixed mindset, it will never work for you. So you have to be open to trying things. Another thing I took away from my chat with Bill was how hard work was the theme for his definition of greatness. He basically said that true greatness is working on your craft every single day, grinding away and getting a little bit better each day. Why? Because that means you are consistently taking action steps towards your goals and dreams and because progress equals happiness, living this way will create a happy and fulfilling life for you. And this really resonated with me because I'm a strong believer in this as well. Obviously, like anything, there are extremities. So by no means was Bill saying you must just go and grind and do nothing other than grind every day and not have a life outside of that. But more so about working on your craft every day. It doesn't matter how big or small, just work on it every day and there will never be a day gone to waste. And lastly, to finish off, Bill spoke about how important it is to live a life that applies the principles of being state of the art. For him, they changed his life. Being state of the art brought his life meaning and direction, while also, while also helping him to feel a sense of fulfillment and happiness. All right, legends. Thanks again for listening to the Soda Process podcast. Now, if you can spare a second, please head down to the review section and give the show a review. You can tap the stars to give me a star rating, which literally only takes a few seconds. Or if you wanted to be more generous with your time, there's a box where you can write a review as well. And this would help me out a lot if you could. So thanks in advance for that one. Also, remember to take a screenshot off this episode, post it on your Instagram story and tag the soda process so I know you've been listening. All right, guys, you know what time it is. It's time to get out there, define your greatness and be state of the art. Hey, so Tarians, thank you so much for listening to that episode, and I hope you've been able to take some great value from it. Now, I just want to ask one small favor from you. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts or Stitcher, please head over and give the podcast a review. 
This helps us to see your thoughts and get some feedback on how we can develop and improve the show. Also, could you please share this episode with someone you think needs to hear the message of this podcast? This helps us to spread the word and the processes on how we can all become state of the art. Alternatively, you could screenshot this episode and post it on your Instagram story. Don't forget to take the soda process and soda fit so we can get some instant feedback. Thank you guys. I love you all. Now let's get it.